Chapter Two of A Short History of the United States by Edward Channing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. A Short History of the United States by Edward Channing. Chapter Two Spanish and French Pioneers in the United States. 10. Stories of Golden Lands Wherever the Spaniards went, the Indians always told them stories of golden lands somewhere else. The Bahama Indians, for instance, told their cruel Spanish masters of a wonderful land toward the north. Not only was there gold in that land, there was also a fountain whose waters restored youth and vigor to the drinker. Among the fierce Spanish soldiers was Ponce de Leon, he determined to see for himself if these stories were true. 11. Discovery of Florida, 1513. In the same year that Balboa discovered the Pacific Ocean, Ponce de Leon sailed northward and westward from the Bahamas. On Easter Sunday, 1513, he anchored off the shores of a new land. The Spanish name for Easter was La Pascua de Flores. So, de Leon called the new land Florida. For the Spaniards were a very religious people, and usually named their lands and the settlements from saints or religious events. De Leon then sailed around the southern end of Florida and back to the West Indies. In 1521, he visited Florida again, and was wounded by an Indian arrow, and returned home to die. 12. Spanish Voyages and Conquests Spanish sailors and conquerors now appeared in quick succession on the northern and western shores of the Gulf of Mexico. One of them discovered the mouth of the Mississippi. Others of them stole Indians and carried them to the islands to work as slaves. The most famous of them all was Cortez. In 1519, he conquered Mexico after a thrilling campaign and found there great store of gold and silver. This discovery led to more expeditions and to the exploration of the southern half of the United States. 13. Coronado in the Southwest, 1540-1542 to 1542. In 1540, Coronado set out from the Spanish towns on the Gulf of California to seek for more gold and silver. For 73 days, he journeyed northward until he came to the Pueblos of the Southwest. These pueblos were huge buildings of stone and sun-dried clay. Some of them were large enough to shelter 300 Indian families. Pueblos are still to be seen in Arizona and New Mexico, and the Indians living in them, even to this day, tell stories of Coronado's coming and of his cruelty. There was hardly any gold and silver in these cities, so a great grief fell upon Coronado and his comrades. 14. The Great Plains Soon, however, a new hope came to the Spaniards, for an Indian told them that far away in the north there really was a golden land. Onward rode Coronado and a body of picked men. They crossed vast plains where there were no mountains to guide them. For more than a thousand miles they rode on until they reached eastern Kansas. Everywhere they found great herds of buffaloes, or wild cows, as they called them. They also met the Indians of the plains. Unlike the Indians of the Pueblos, these Indians lived in tents made of buffalo hides, stretched upon poles. Everywhere there were plains, buffaloes, and Indians. Nowhere was there gold or silver. Broken-hearted, Coronado and his men rode southward to their old homes in Mexico. 15. De Soto in the Southeast, 1539-1543 to 1543. In 1539, a Spanish army landed at Tampa Bay on the western coast of Florida. The leader of this army was De Soto, one of the conquerors of Peru. He was very fond of the sport of killing Indians, and was also greedy for gold and silver. From Tampa, he marched northward to South Carolina, and then marched southwestward to Mobile Bay. There he had a dreadful time, for the Indians burned his camp and stores and killed many of his men. From Mobile he wandered northwestward until he came to a great river. 
it was the mississippi and it was so wide that a man standing on one bank could not see a man standing on the opposite bank some of de soto's men penetrated westward nearly to the line of coronado's march but the two bands did not meet de soto died and was buried in the mississippi those of his men who still lived built a few boats and managed to reach the spanish settlements in mexico sixteen other spanish expeditions many other spanish explorers visited the shores of the united states before fifteen fifty some sailed along the pacific coast others sailed along the atlantic coast the spaniards also made several attempts to found settlements both on the northern shore of the gulf of mexico and on chesapeake bay but all these early attempts ended in failure in fifteen fifty there were no spaniards on the continent within the present limits of the united states except possibly a few traders and missionaries in the southwest seventeen early french voyages fifteen twenty four to fifteen thirty six the first french expedition to america was led by an italian named verrazano but he sailed in the service of francis i king of france he made his voyage in fifteen twenty four and sailed along the coast from the cape fear river to nova scotia he entered new york harbor and spent two weeks in newport harbor he reported that the country was as pleasant as it is possible to conceive the next french expedition was led by a frenchman named cartier in fifteen thirty four he visited the gulf of st lawrence in fifteen thirty five he sailed up the st lawrence river to montreal but before he could get out of the river again the ice formed about his ships he and his crew had to pass the winter there they suffered terribly and twenty-four of them perished of cold and sickness in the spring of fifteen thirty six the survivors returned to france eighteen the french in carolina fifteen sixty two the french next explored the shores of the carolinas revolt was the name of their commander sailing southward from carolina he discovered a beautiful river and called it the river of may but we know it by its spanish name of st john's he left a few men on the carolina coast and returned to france a year or more those men remained then wearying of their life in the wilderness they built a crazy boat with sails of shirts and sheets and steered for france soon their water gave out and then their food finally almost dead they were rescued by an english ship nineteen the french in florida fifteen sixty four to sixty five while these frenchmen were slowly drifting across the atlantic a great french expedition was sailing to carolina finding revolt's men gone the new colony was planted on the banks of the river of may soon the settlers ate up all the food they had brought with them then they brought food from the indians giving them toys and old clothes in exchange some of the colonists rebelled they seized a vessel and sailed away to plunder the spaniards in the west indies they told the spaniards of the colony on the river of may and the spaniards resolved to destroy it twenty the spaniards in florida fifteen sixty five for this purpose the spaniards sent out an expedition under menendez he sailed to the river of may and found ribold there with a french fleet so he turned southward and going ashore founded st augustine ribold followed but a terrible storm drove his whole fleet ashore south of st augustine menendez then marched over land to the french colony he surprised the colonists and killed nearly all of them then going back to st augustine he found ribold and his shipwrecked sailors and killed nearly all of them in this way ended the french attempts to found a colony in carolina and florida but st augustine remained and is today the oldest town on the mainland of the united states and of chapter two chapter three pioneers of england twenty one sir john hawkins for many years after cabot's voyage englishmen were too busy at home to pay much attention to distant expeditions 
but in queen elizabeth's time english seamen began to sail to america the first of them to win a place in history was john hawkins he carried cargoes of negro slaves from africa to the west indies and sold them to the spanish planters on his third voyage he was basely attacked by the spaniards and lost four of his five ships returning home he became one of the leading men of elizabeth's little navy and fought most gallantly for his country twenty two sir francis drake a greater and more famous man was hawkins cousin francis drake he had been with hawkins on his third voyage and had come to hate spaniards most vigorously in 1577 he made a famous voyage around the world steering through the straits of magellan he plundered the spanish towns on the western coasts of south america at one place his sailors went on shore and found a man sound asleep near him were four bars of silver we took the silver and left the man wrote the old historian of the voyage drake also captured vessels loaded with gold and silver and pearls sailing northward he repaired his ship the pelican on the coast of california and returned home by the way of the cape of good hope twenty three sir walter raleigh still another famous englishman of elizabeth's time was walter raleigh he never saw the coasts of the united states but his name is rightly connected with our history because he tried again and again to found colonies on our shores in fifteen eighty four he sent amadas and barlow to explore the atlantic seashore of north america their reports were so favorable that he sent a strong colony to settle on roanoke island in virginia as he named that region but the settlers soon became unhappy because they found no gold then too their food began to fail and drake happening along took them back to england twenty four the lost colony 1587 raleigh made still one more attempt to found a colony in virginia but the fate of this colony was most dreadful for the settlers entirely disappeared men women and children among the lost was little virginia dare the first english child born in america no one really knows what became of these people but the indians told the later settlers of jamestown that they had been killed by the savages twenty five destruction of the spanish armada fifteen eighty eight this activity of the english in america was very distressing to the king of spain for he claimed all america for himself and did not wish the englishmen to go there thither he determined to conquer england and thus put an end to these english voyages but hawkins drake raleigh and the man behind the english guns were too strong even for the invincible armada spain's sea power never recovered from this terrible blow Englishmen could now found colonies with only slight fear of the Spaniards. When the Spanish king learned of the settlement of Jamestown, he ordered an expedition to go from St. Augustine to destroy the English colony. But the Spaniards never got farther than the mouth of the James River, for when they reached that point, they thought they saw the masts and spars of an English ship. They at once turned about and sailed back to Florida as fast as they could go. End of chapter 3